Good everybody, I want you to know that you're unstoppable. Welcome to the Unstoppable Nation. Today we'll be continuing the series of temptation and relationship. Previously we spoke about appetite as part of the ways you'll be tempted when you're in your wilderness. And uh, there are three types of temptation. Like I told you, we have the appetite. You'll be tempted with your appetite, be it for money, be it for food, be it for sex. You'll be tested with your power, with your supremacy and how powerful you are in your relationship. And you'll be tested with your pride. If you can pass those three tests, your relationship will definitely work. Your relationship will work. Now, we are moving on to the power session today. And what I want to discuss about that, that I will be majoring on, is on the anger issues. You understand? And I will let you know what anger issues has caused in a lot of relationships and what it has caused in yours, as you might know, and how you can always handle it. You understand? I want you to first of all know that the origin of anger is, uh, is your feeling, is part of your feeling, as you can feel excited, feel happy, feel good. So you can feel angry and you can feel sad, you can feel bitter too. Now, scenarios lead to the event that brings about the type of feelings that come out from you. It's either you are expressing it in a normal way, which people regard to as being normal, or you are reacting to it extraordinarily. You understand? In fact, it's written in the Bible that you can get angry, but don't let sun set on your anger. Meaning that there are some types of anger that you would have that are legitimately right you understand be it maybe something that has to do with caring about people about people's progress and the anger you have is the fact that you see that this person is doing something wrong and you just want to put this person right and you are passionate about it you understand those are the right way of getting angry but what i'll be also majoring on tonight is the kind of anger that are not the right ones which has destroyed a lot of relationship. And if you can see, anger issue is one of the issues that a lot of people that God has gifted or God has sent or that has a talent of speaking and motivating people should really be talking about because it has destroyed a lot of relationship more than building a lot. Anger issue is something that some people are, are, are going through right now and they are helpless. They don't know who can help them out. They've prayed, they've done all what they think they could, and it's like it's not really gonna stop because anytime the thing comes, it's like it comes in an in a shocking way, like in a in a way they are not prepared for, and before they know what is happening, they've already started shouting, behaving violently, and doing what they are not supposed to do. And at the end of the day, when they calm down, there's this always this feeling of guilt, this feeling of shame and you always want to apologize to the person that they've been lashing at and that really make them to feel bad about themselves yeah you might be looking for a solution like that and you might have been on the journey of this solution for a long time but i want you to know that tonight i'm gonna help you out by the grace of god to give you the right things that you begin to work on and going forward you would realize that is something that you can actually control. Is something that you can think. Is something that you can use positively instead of using it negatively. So uh, I will be taking. I want to read some words to you now. Then from there we'll be going deep into these anger issues. So the product of anger is either actual or actions. Definitely, the product of anger when you know that somebody is angry is either they are shouting violently and they are using as ash words. You understand? Or by their actions. Some people, when they're angry, they just keep quiet. But when you talk to them, they won't answer you. So that is action. They will not answer you. They don't want to relate with you. They want. They don't want to have anything to do with you. Some can go on and on and on. It's not like they don't even want to stop sometimes, but they can't just stop themselves. And some people, when they are angry, they talk. You understand? They talk and they shout. And it, it, it goes a long way to stop them. You understand? And also, this is always a result. This also always results, like I said, in guilt trip. You 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 feel guilty that you shouted like that in public or privately to the person. Maybe you are talking to your wife or to your husband, and you were talking like at the peak of your voice, you know, shouting on something that is not really serious, but it's actually paining you, and you don't even know why, and you are lashing out your anger. So he's always bringing this this feeling after. 
And for you to always have this feeling after, it means that you too, you know that when you were doing it, it was wrong. Meaning that if you could control yourself at the time that you're lashing out, you would have preferred to control yourself. Because at the end of the day, the feeling that comes with that is, I'm happy, I'm able, no how, how, how the situation was was really painful really got me angry but i'm happy about how i handled it like you give yourself trophy that is what we human always want to feel so it's not good to do something and when you're thinking about it you're feeling ashamed of what you've done and that is why we have to tackle this anger issue decisively now there are types of anger we have the right anger and the wrong anger i said the right anger is about crying about others like you don't condemn them you don't judge people you just want to focus on the wrong act they are doing and you just want to address it in the most polite way and the most comfortable way that it won't lead to any violence or it won't lead to anything that will cause a rift that is what you're targeting you are not targeting the person and for example if you remember that place in the bible that the brother woman in the heart you understand but jesus was not happy that she was committing the sin anyway as much as jesus said that let the uh, one who is without sin be the first to cast a stone but at the same time he didn't condemn her and with the way jesus treated her you would have realized that this kind of teaching would lead a lot of people in that kind of situation to repentance than condemning them than stoning them than killing them and not giving them opportunity so that was the type of anger you understand that i see you understand you if you remember there was a time jesus was angry and he took action in front of the uh, uh the 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 synagogue that it was like this is the house of my father is not a house to be trading and all that and i was you so you could see example from there the right anger and the wrong the wrong anger now let's go in your action when you're angry you need to learn you need to know something you know the unstoppable nation is basically about your personal fellowship with God. That's the main thing that I care about. You understand? I don't want, uh, I'm not the type of person that wants to give you some kind of standard that is really, really unbelievable or unimaginable. But all I just want you to be aware of is, please stay close to God when you are alone, like in your, in your privacy. When, when you when you when you are in your private room, when you are alone and nobody's watching, make sure that you have God at the, top of your mind like at the top of your priority so that you will know what you're doing so that you will not be uh somebody else outside and inwardly you are somebody else you understand what i'm saying i want you to have a personal bond with god personal relationship personal fellowship because with that there are so many things that will be happening on the outside that people will be like ah you guy, this guy, you might, you must really be praying, but truly, it's not about prayer. It's just about the love that you have for God, that God knows and is helping you out on so many things that you don't even need to pray about. You understand? I'm not here to judge anybody. You understand? And I'm not here to give anybody unnecessary standard. All I'm just trying to say is what works for me, that I believe that if you try it, it works for you to develop a good relationship with God. Whether you call yourself the worst sinner or you are the holiest person in the world, don't joke with your relationship with God because in it you understand you would be able to know how to react in the public you won't be doing things let's say you are angry now you will not be giving you know action always goes after anger is either you are shouting is either you keep quiet is either you just do something violently and you go now you will have it at the back of your mind that if i'm angry I need to do something that will bring people closer to god in this state that they know that i deserve to be angry done you want to express yourself you just want people to feel you like yeah i don't take nonsense i don't take this and that's why i have to do that nah if you don't take nonsense people will know and you can prove that and when you prove that in a matured and godly way let me tell you something people will be like ah, as much as it did we know that it was angry but still see i was able to control himself that is always a challenge to a lot of people a lot of people cannot really control themselves when they are at the peak of anger but if you could do that, you can bring people to God without even preaching to them. You see, I always say people emulate you as a Christian in terms of lifestyle beyond what you say. So you should really know how to act. So don't let anger be your excuse to be misbehaving. You understand? I know in traffic sometimes some people can actually be crazy. Like some people, they behave on the road as if they were sent to you specifically that day. Even just imagine you're driving and you're singing some worship songs, some lovely song, and one bus just come to move your car to the side. 
maybe a car that you just got like two weeks ago. Do you know how your head will first of all spin? I know it takes the grace of God to really be calm in that kind of situation. Especially when you say that this person is trying to be really unreasonable. But those are the kind of situation that will call temptation. Those are the kind of situation that will call test. So how many have you failed? I've failed a lot before in the past. You understand? And I hope that I won't fail anymore. We do fail that test very well. But you see, the more you... That's why I keep emphasizing. When you get close to God, it will reduce. It will be painful, actually. You'll be angry, actually. You really want to do something actually, but because you now have a good relationship, before you even start talking, you've realized that this person is just maybe sent to me to tempt me. And I will be in the plan of God today and I will not lash out as the person expects. If it's insurance you need to get to repair your car, beautiful. It doesn't require fighting like on the street. You get what I mean? So now moving on that is to tell you that please whatever from henceforth what the bible means by saying don't let the sun set on your anger is whatever action that will proceed from your anger should not be what will chase people away from god or it's not it shouldn't be what people will not be like a whole you why would you allow yourself to behave like this? Or what would bring shame to you? So you need, meaning my first point is, before you begin to do the things you feel like doing emotionally when you get angry, always think about the repercussion. You have to practice this. It doesn't just come the first day. It doesn't come sometime the first week. In fact, it doesn't come the first month. You understand? But you need to keep this at the point of your mind. You want to solve this anger issue in your relationship? Yeah, so there's the first one. Always, 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 always keep in mind that before I react, even if the thing meets you suddenly and you mess up the first time, mess up the second time, but keep it in mind that if I begin, I know my rage, I know my hunger. If I begin right now, it's going to spoil it. In, and at the end of the day, I'll still be the one to be apologizing for what I should be the one they should be apologizing to. So because of that, I would rather just walk away, one, or I would rather not just say anything, Two, or I would rather just find a way to communicate this without raising my voice and without being violent. You understand? Because at the end of the day, when I'm alone, I want to give myself trophy that I'm able to control myself than thinking that I need to go and apologize because of how I've messed up a lot of things. Or I need to be praying to God for forgiveness because I have messed up a lot of things. That's number one. So moving on, let's go to number two. Is your... Okay, the Bible says we should be slow to get angry. You understand? Meaning, if meaning there are some anger that come like instantaneously, like it comes immediately. Like, but what the Bible is trying to say is, Bible will not tell you to do what you don't have. Will not tell you to have control on something that God knows that you don't have. He's the one that created you, so He knows what you are capable of. So when they say be slow to anger, then you need to start practicing that. Yeah, you may be a very spontaneous person. You just want to, you want to, you want to snap and all that. But Bible is trying to tell you here that there is a control you have that you are not using over that anger issue, and you need to really, 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 really start taking charge of that control right now. Like uh, there is, I, I will still read that place to you. I think uh, James, uh, that's like verse, I think twenty nine thirty. Yeah, there about I'll, I'll read a place to you that says you listen with both ears before you speak meaning you need to assess whatever you're listening to or whatever is happening before being spontaneous about it like there is no dignity there is no respect there is no pride in snapping every time you will be disrespected and you don't want to be disrespected you don't want to be the one that because of the way you behave whenever they say certain things or whenever they do certain things everybody now try to hide some information from you or because they know that this is the exact way you behave they know how to press your button so if they want you to start displaying like a masquerade in front of people they know what to say they know what to do and immediately you two you start dancing to their tune you've allowed people to control you for too long so i'm trying to tell you right now I'm trying to beg you right now that from henceforth, I want you to be very slow to get angry. 
for your own sake, for your own reputation, for your own dignity, except if you don't love yourself. And these are the part of the thing that I tell people that you need to learn how to start respecting yourself. When you respect yourself, you don't want to do things that at the end of the day, you will be feeling disrespected. You'll be conscious of things to do to be earning you respect. Remember, you earn respect. Nobody will just want to give you respect anyhow. They give you respect based on what you've done, that they want, what you've done, that they appreciate it, and they are really being inspired by to the extent that they just don't want to look at you as a regular person again. They just want to give you that respect. Consistency always breeds respect. You understand? So if you are consistently snapping, if you are consistently fighting people are the are the minimum kind of words to just joke with you then it means that you'll be consistently disrespected but if you know how to hold yourself and how to be very slow to get angry in the midst of when they intentionally even want you to display like masquerade for them they want you to to snap the way you used to snap but that day you hold yourself from that day if you can consistently do that you will end your respect back and you would be respected. So I want you to know that uh, in um, James, that, uh, that's a passage that I'm talking about. That's James, 19, James 1, 19 to 20. Let's go there so that, because I would like to read it to, to you so that you would be able to uh, understand it. James 1, James 1, 21 to, we're almost there, good. James 1, that's 21. James 1, 19 to 20. He said, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. You've got to hear, listen, digest. Don't just snap. Don't just be ready like, 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 a, like, 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 like a cannon that they're about to shoot. They're just about, that, that is always just ready to explode. No. He said, everyone should be quick to listen. Listen. Slow to speak and slow to become angry. See, I read a place in the Bible yesterday that says, it's not what you take in that defiles you. Jesus was talking about uh, Pharisees that like to do the cultural thing, the traditional thing, the religious thing, without having a solid relationship with God in their private. You understand? And he's trying to tell them that that is not what counts. What counts is your personal relationship with this almighty God. And this one is saying it. He said, it's not what you take in that defiles you. It's what you release out. Meaning that if you speak in a cool and gentle manner, if you speak in the right way, when you are hungry, you understand, you would be deemed wise. People will not see you as a reason to run away from God. People will not see you as a reason to even insult God. People will want to learn from you. And that will not, meaning that you will not be defiled, meaning that you will not be disrespected. So what they are trying to tell you is, even if you listen quick, if you relax before you lash out, if you relax before you lash out, your anger will be reduced from the high level, at least to some certain level, whereby instead of you to just scream, you can just be like, I don't really like what you're doing. The person will see the anger in your face. But at least you didn't say something that you have to apologize about in the future. I've been a victim of that a lot before. When I get angry, God, when I get angry, it's like the old house should come down out quick. But at the end of the day, I'm not getting any younger. And I always like to see myself as a good, gentle, responsible man. And... Uh, it's been a journey. I had to work on myself. I read some Bible verses and everything. But since I've been on the Unstoppable Nation, it's not like I don't get angry sometimes. But I don't allow sun to set on the anger. Like even if I'm angry, the way I talk, I try to control. And when I lose the control sometimes, I quickly apologize. But now I'm far better than where I used to be. If I shout before when I'm angry, it's like, I don't know why. You understand? And I don't want to have any excuse for it anymore. But one particular verse changed my life. We will get there. And that verse in the Bible is still one thing that I try to hold on to right now that has dealt with this anger issue in such a way that it has makes my it has made my relationship to work more and it has made me to even to be happy about myself so when there are scenarios that present itself for me to get angry and i don't get angry i like the way i feel 
than when I get angry. So it has drastically reduced. So what I'm trying to tell you is to remove that anger issue from your mind. It's not like it will disappear. It means that you have to load yourself with a new information on how to control this anger. And as you are feeding those information on the side of your mind, the side that makes that anger to come instantaneously, spontaneously, would be starving and it will be shrinking. It will be shrinking. It will be shrinking till one day it will have no power to be your default reaction anymore. And in so doing, you would be happy with yourself. And definitely your partner will be happy with you. Definitely the community will be happy with you because they will know that you're a responsible and a gentleman. You understand what I'm saying? So please, be, now let me read the next verse of that place. It said, because human anger does not produce righteousness that God desires. Meaning there is no way you can justify committing sins and doing violent things because you want to impress God. It says it, human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Do you know the kind of righteousness that God desires? That you need to be kind, you need to be loving, you need to be faithful, you need to be gentle as a dove. You understand? It's not in the character of people that love God and want to be around God, to be the violent type in terms of reacting to people. Those violence, those anger is meant to fight the war against the kingdom of darkness. It's not meant against ourselves. You understand? Anger used to bring fight. Bring, fight used to bring disunity. And in disunity, there is nothing you can build. In division, there is nothing that will work. You understand? It's when you come together that you can build together and you can have a common goal and you can succeed together. So I want you to know, now that you are understanding this anger issue thing from another angle let me now give you the solution to it uh so uh, we need to i will still read some things to you then the quickest way to sound or look like a fool listen the quickest way to sound or look like a fool is when you are angry uncontrollably let me read that place for you in the bible to back it up let me read that place to for you in the bible to to back it up uh when you are angry uncontrollably people will call you a fool i'm not the one that say uh it's the bible that says it and i don't want you to be tagged a fool please you understand what i'm saying uh okay do not make friends with the all tempered person do not associate with one easily anger that is proverbs 22 verse 24 now that is not where i'm going to i'm going to proverbs 29 11 i'm getting there soon so you would understand what i'm trying to say right now uh this is okay this is that place that changed to my life forever this particular verse is proverbs 19 11 it said a man's wisdom gives him patience it is to his glory to overlook an offense so it is let me now rephrase it a man's foolishness makes him to be spontaneous and it is is a uh, disrespect not to overlook offense yeah to overlook offense might be really difficult it's, 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 especially when 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 you've repeatedly told this person and this person keeps doing this to overlook it now makes you to it makes you to actually feel stupid like you are not in control so you want to fight the person to make sure that you do it the violent way but that's not actually the right way. You can get it by force, but that does not change the person. The only way that that kind of person can be changed is when you start overlooking. They are trying to hurt you. They are trying to do everything what they want to do. But your character says, no, as a Christian, I'm not supposed to do this. And let me tell you something. With time, they will get tired of doing it. And they will come and ask you, like, which kind of woman being are you? I was trying to do that. You are not even seeing me. That is where I want you to get to. Now, is if... if if you want to be called a wise man, if you desire to tell yourself that actually I'm wise, is when they said a man's wisdom gives him patience, is when you are patient in terms of in the middle of when you are supposed to be shouting, screaming, misbehaving. And they now say it is your glory that you will take home forever 
when you overlook that offense that demands you to spontaneously react. So I think being angry at this point, after everything I've said, is a personal decision to actually try to want to be looking foolish to your partner, looking foolish in the community, looking foolish to people. I'm telling you, as with this message that I'm telling you, I'm telling myself too. Because it's resounding in my head more than even before now. If you want people to be calling you a foolish person, continue getting angry, continue displaying outside. There is no amount of words you want to say they've concluded in their mind. And if, they, if you want to be named that wise man, that wise lady, in terms of the storm of anger, control yourself. Be patient. They will respect you. They will call you a wise woman. Even if you are the one at fault, they will respect you. They would respect you. And I know that every man in this world wants that. You understand? So, um, in that case, I want you to know that if you also want to be the quickest way, listen, the quickest way to be termed a man of wisdom, that is 1911. I, I want to see that one of foolishness again. I think I missed it. I was, I missed it. Uh, I will get it. Aha! Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent of his anger, gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. Hmm. When you vent with the way it's coming from the inside, you just got to know, not from me, from the wisest man in the world, the Bible. That is King Solomon writing this. He said, and you know he's been inspired by God. He said, a fool gives full vent to his anger. When you are venting, at the time I used to vent, I want you to feel how the thing is spinning me in my heart. So if you are not feeling it, it even aggravates me more. So I want to shout out. These are the verses that changed my life. That when I find myself trying to vent everything, I just realized that I've been foolish. They don't need to tell you. They will, see, don't mind people. They will tell you, oh, sorry, I know what the person do to you is really... But at the end of the day, they will call you fool. That is that why he's now shouting and just misbehaving anyhow. So you need to be wise. You need to be wise. You need to learn how to be patient and to overlook than for people to feel because that venting is going to expose you to shame. And you'll feel guilty at the end of the day. Instead of you to receive an apology, you'll be the one to be apologizing. So take note of that. Now we are moving on to, we are about finishing. We are moving on to what is called control. Let's go back to that verse so you would understand. They said, a wise man keeps himself under control. Now, the source of control is power. That is what power does. Power controls something. And remember, excuse me, excuse me, that is what I told you about at the beginning. The part of the thing that you'll be tested with is your power. You understand? Because the devil tested Jesus with food, tested him with the power, and tested him with pride if he would jump and the angels. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, this aspect of power right now breeds control. The only reason why you faint, and this is my summary. The only reason why you vent all your anger out, you want people to feel, you want to destroy everything, is because you've been ignorant of the power of control that you have over this vent. Now, a wise man has told us right now that you've got a power that you've not been using. And that's why you feel ashamed after every episode of your anger. And today, God wants to deliver you fully from it. So I want you to know that you've got power to control venting this anger. Now you know what causes anger. You know the end result of every angry episode when the sun set on your anger. Now you want to know how to control the source of the anger. And this is where it comes from. You must first of all be aware that you have power over this. You must first of all be aware that you want people to stop controlling you. You are the owner of the control. Why are you allowing people to be the one to control that thing in you? 
It's not like they have power more than you. It's just because you've been neglecting your own power. You'll be ignorant, ignorant of your own power. And that's why they are using their own to press the button that is controlling you. You need to take charge of your control today. And that is by using your power rightly. Because you are rich, because you are the biggest, doesn't mean that when you are angry, you should be killing or you should be treating people like slaves. You understand? There is a way you can control that anger. And when you control this anger, let me tell you what the Bible says about you so that you would understand fully. It said, he who is slow to anger is better and more honorable than the mighty soldier. If you are slow to anger, this is the result. And he who rules and controls his own spirit than he who captures the city. Meaning, if you can rule your spirit, if you can control the source of your anger, your emotions, you do not allow it to lead to an action that will make people to now be saying, relax. Then, you are stronger than he who can take a whole city. That also tells you that it can be difficult. Because somebody that will take a city, you know what he has to do. The preparation he has to make. But the Bible is trying to tell you that you are even more than that. If you can be aware of your power, to control your anger issues because let me tell you something you've seen the kind of anger that we have the kind of the result of the ang the, the result of your anger is not what god demands from you it's not what god demands from you meaning that you should be slow to get angry meaning as much as you have the power to do it put it under control Put it under control so that at the end of the day, you'll be receiving the trophy of a wise man. You'll be receiving the trophy of a wise woman. You'll be receiving the trophy of is just so matured about everything. People like to be called mature than to be called immature. You understand? You will receive the trophy of I just like being around him. It's so peaceful. You'll be receiving that kind of trophy that when you think about yourself, you'll be happy with yourself. Anger issue will always give you the opposite. So today, now that you know, I want you to get in touch with the power over that emotion from henceforth. Always tell yourself, if I begin to display right now, the outcome, even if it's nice today, I know I will feel ashamed and I will still go to apologize. So why disrespecting myself? That should be your key thinking before you begin. It may not come the first time, it may not come the second time. But if you put this at the back of your mind, every time the episode that will get you angry comes up, you would one day be able to take over. It's because you don't know. Nobody is blaming you. It's because you don't know before. Now that you know, let's see how you overcome this temptation of anger issues in your relationship. And I want you to know that you are unstoppable. Let's meet again tomorrow. We'll be talking about like the part two of this power. And we'll be talking about um, the last temptation, which is pride. You understand? That if you overcome it, then you will be able to overcome any challenges that is surrounded around these three things in your relationship. And at the end of the day, your relationship is going to blossom and your relationship is going to be wealthy. And at the end of the day, both of you will actually be unstoppable. Let's meet tomorrow again. You are unstoppable.